Hey there, friends. Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, today uh, I'm going to be taking a bullet because I'm going to be talking to you guys about fragrances that are, to an extent, massively hated within the fragrance community. Well, maybe massively is overselling it a bit. But a lot of the fragrances I'm going to talk to you about here today, if not the majority of them, are some of the lowest rated fragrances from their respective brands, at least when you're looking at fragrance rating websites. But each one of these I really like, some of them I outright love. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about some fragrances that a lot of you out there are going to give me flack for liking. I'll have each one of these linked in the description below in case you want to check them out for any reason. And also, I'm going to give you those codes. Uh, Gents10 is the code. It gives you 10% off both Lucky Scent and Twisted Lily. Can. So if you're shopping for niche fragrances and you're thinking, oh man, I'm gonna have to buy this at full retail. No, my friend, you're gonna have to buy that at 90% of full retail, which, you know, it's it's something. And then if you want a code for jomashop.com, uh, gents eight, eight bucks off any order over 110. All right, first up, an Azaro fragrance. Now, Azaro has a lot of fragrances that uh, get pooped on, but this one, it seems to get a decent amount of that it's Azaro Porome Cologne Intense. Now to be fair, I'd say a lot of people haven't really smelled this fragrance because it came out not that long ago and it's not the type of fragrance that people are gonna go, oh my God, a new Azaro Porome Cologne Intense. I have to rush out to my local place that actually probably doesn't carry this and try it. So yeah, not too many people have gotten their nose on this as compared to you know their Wanted line or their Chrome line. Azaro did do me dirty here. It only has three notes, lime, lavender, and mastic. So yeah, I can't really get behind that. Stop with the three note thing. I don't like it. This one though does not seem to be to everybody's taste. It has gotten some down votes, you could say, but I think it's actually not too bad. It's what you would expect. It's pretty simple. It's fresh. It's clean. It's sweet. It has a really nice citrus touch to it that at times comes across a little bit tropical, actually. It's a really easy fragrance to pull off. And now that it's at discounters, it doesn't cost all that much. So for me, it's one of those fragrances that I don't see much to dislike. Yeah, it's nothing that's gonna set the world on fire, but you don't have to pay much for it, and it smells really good for spring and summer, so kinda dig it. After that, a fragrance that I really do love, and it's from a house that, to be fair, most of their fragrances get a lot of love. So this one doesn't get the amount of hate that a lot of these other fragrances do, but when you compare it to the house that it's from, it is one of the ones that catches the most flack. It's Amouage Sunshine Man, and mine has taken on a very deep, rich, golden hue. It wasn't that dark when I first got it. It has lavender, brandy, tonka, and immortelle as some of the notes. I think it's a great change of pace fragrance for spring and even fall. Summertime, personally, I'd probably go with something else just because this one is a little syrupy sweet. It's rich, it's dense, but it does have a good amount of freshness as well. It's just something like this sprayed on heavy in summertime. Oof, you're asking for trouble. Maybe that's one thing that people didn't like about it. The name is Sunshine Man and people were maybe expecting one thing and then they got something else. Same thing happened to an extent with Beach Hut Man. Some people were expecting one thing, it didn't turn out to be that, and then they automatically just went, no, I don't like it. But for me, Sunshine Man is a great homage. I've always really dug this. That one I'll stick my neck out for and say it's good. Now this next one comes from a line that has some fragrances that are heralded and they're held up as fantastic designer releases and then has other fragrances that people just kick into a ditch and go, ugh, ugh disgusting, mm, how could you? It's Bulgari Man Wood Essence. Now, like I said, there are others that get hate in this line as well. The newest Terra Essence, that one I think actually gets a little bit more hate than this one. And I like that one too. Now, Cypress, Cedar, Benzoin, and Citrus is some of the notes in the fragrance. So you have this nice, uh, semi-sweet citrus off the top, maybe more sweet than it is overtly fresh. And then you have a bit of a green woodiness as it dries, which is reflected in the packaging, the bottle being green, the fragrance name being Wood Essence. Again, it's 
Pretty much what you would expect, you know? It's a wearable, versatile take on this style of scent. For some people, maybe the woodiness is not realistic enough. Maybe it comes across too boring for some people because it's made for versatility over just about anything else. But I think that overall, it's a really nice fragrance. It's got a little touch of class to it. Like I said, easy to use, very versatile. So I don't hate it. Not my favorite from the Bulgari Man line at all, but I don't think it's a complete piece of crap. Okay, this next one, probably for some people would be like the biggest designer, major blue fragrance launch failure, yeah, possibly ever. Oof, that's rough. Because you can say you hate Dior Sauvage. You can say you hate Blue de Chanel. You can say you hate all those fragrances. But when you look at the sales numbers, I'm pretty sure Dior and Chanel and those brands, they don't care if you say, hey, Sauvage sucks, man. They'll just pull out a wad of cash like this big around. Be like, oh, what's that? I can't hear you because the gravitational pull of all this money is drowning out what you're saying. They don't care. And that's what this brand was hoping would happen when they released this. It did, it did not happen that way. Mr. Burberry, this is the Eau de Toilette, the original Mr. Burberry. It had Francis Kirkshon as the perfumer, which is a pretty big name. And they even gave the bottle a little bow tie thing here. Dress it up a little bit because it's Mr. Burberry. And he's very gentlemanly. But this just did not take off like Sauvage or Bleu de Chanel or the y Line or Versace Dylan Blue or Invictus or Dolce & Gabbana K or Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue to a much lesser extent because it's kind of a different type of fragrance. But still, yeah, it, it didn't it didn't do it. Grapefruit, Woods, Cardamom, Tarragon, and Mint. Some of the notes in the fragrance. Now, admittedly, I was not blown away when this came out. I didn't think it was amazing. But over time, come to kind of respect it, especially because the price is considerably lower now. Mr. Burberry does things a bit different. It's more aromatic, so you have more of an herbal feel to the scent. It doesn't go as heavy with notes like Ambroxan or Amberwoods. Now, I'm not saying that it's devoid of those, uh, but it's not as in your face as in some of the bigger dogs out there. Maybe middle-aged guys and older, that would be a blue fragrance that would work better for them than some of the other uh, more youthful blue scents. I think it's actually better than people give it credit for. After that, a bad boy fragrance. Yeah, bad boy. People live to hate on bad boy. It's Herrera Bad Boy Le Parfum for me that I think is actually better than it gets credit for. It has a cannabis note, grapefruit, leather, and pepper. Now the cannabis note, that's just marketing. And yeah, it is a little bit of like an edge lord type of note, you know? Oh, this is bad boy. Guess what one of the notes are? Weed. So yeah, I mean, that's a little, uh, a little iffy, but the fragrance smells nice. And I like that green tinge that it gets from the, the cannabis note. When it came out and I did first impressions on it, I was actually surprised at how much I liked it. And at the time, I think I said something like, if that year, you know, new fragrances stopped at that point in time, that it would be like a top five favorite or something. I've always thought that it was actually pretty decent. I know it's got a lot going against it. People don't like the bottle design. They don't like the name. They don't like the ideas behind it, all that stuff. But I actually do kind of dig it. After that, Yves Saint Laurent, Y Eau de Toilette. This is the new Y Eau de Toilette uh, because the other one went bye-bye. The original, it's been uh, reformulated into this version, but the original also. Y Eau de Toilette has always, for whatever reason, been the outlier from the Y line. It's the one that people love to crap on the most, but I think in actuality, from every fragrance in the line, it's probably the most versatile. Y Eau de Toilette, I think personally you can wear year round. I think that you can wear this easily to the office. You can wear this in formal situations. It'd be a decent date night fragrance, a great casual fragrance, a really good dumb reach. It's got a great compliment factor to it. Whether or not people want to admit that, it does. And I think that the uh, new version is actually an improvement over the original. So I like Y Eau de Toilette a lot. I think it's really solid. Now this next one, I don't necessarily love, but I do like it when you consider the price point that you can pick it up for from discounters. Davidoff Run Wild. Now, one thing you gotta understand is that nowadays Davidoff products are not really getting anybody excited. Maybe once every three, four years, they come out with something, usually a cool water flanker. 
that some people will get mildly intrigued by, but that's about all they're doing nowadays, it seems like. So Run Wild was announced. You got this kind of decent looking bottle. It basically looks like if you took a cool water bottle and tried to make it look more masculine by making it more stout. Ginger, lavender, tonka, and fir resin, some of the notes in this fragrance. So what's the reason everyone hates on it then? If it's not too expensive and the packaging looks okay for a fragrance that's not too expensive. Well, you see, it has this little bit of an issue where it kind of sort of smells like Davidoff's take on Invictus. Invictus. Yeah. I am a self proclaimed uh, not lover of Invictus, but sometimes I, I give it a bit of a pass. I don't have to be in love with that DNA to understand it works for so many people out there. And also, I understand that if I were younger, I would probably rock the crap out of it. I would wear it nonstop. So Run Wild, it has a bit of that style to it, a bit of that flair to it. Maybe it does have a little more of a green edge uh, as compared to actual Invictus, but the fact that it's a bit close to that and has that synthetic sweetness to it turned a lot of people away. I think though, for the right price, Run Wild is a really solid scent. Next one is a personal love of mine. So whatever, say what you want. It's Boss Bottle Tonic. I've always liked Boss Bottle Tonic. It has that Boss Bottled cinnamon in here, that apple that you expect. But here, as you can tell by the color of the bottle, it is freshened up and made more suitable for spring and summertime use. You've got bitter orange in here, you have ginger, you have woods along with that uh, cinnamon and apple that I mentioned before. And I love the, the take on Boss Bottled here. Yes, it's a little synthetic, but I think it's really well done and fresh and zingy and just an easy wear, not very expensive. The type of scent that in spring or summer, I'll just grab this spray and go and it makes me happy. Niche fragrance time, what could it be? It's a Bond number nine, oh boy. And it's a Coney Island. Yeah, Coney Island. This one, possibly more than just about anything else here is uh, really love it or hate it. And uh, trust me when I say this, if you hate it, I get it. I get it and I do not begrudge you at all. Yeah, this one is a little funky, even to my nose. And I strangely do kind of like it. And I, I don't even know why. The no breakdown on this is weird. It has margarita, it has caramel, it has musk, it has vanilla, it has cedar. It has a uh, kind of a, sea salty ocean kind of note that's a bit briny. Yeah, like a bit of that ocean air that doesn't actually smell super pleasant. You know what I'm talking about? That little bit of a funk to that ocean note. Yeah, it's got something like that. And it's hard to wear and it's not at all an easy reach for summertime. Yeah, I could list off like 150 plus other fragrances that I own. Actually, that's really underselling it a lot more than that. That would work so much easier and so much better in summer as far as other people smelling it and going, you smell nice because the number of people that smell Coney Island coming off you strongly uh, that are going to tell you you smell nice. It's not a huge number. And yet for some weird reason, in spite of all that, I actually like it. So I I, I got no explanation for you. So yeah, Coney Island. Last fragrance, Ralph's Club from Ralph Lauren. This one, you know, it's it's that blue type of fragrance, that versatile, mass appealing, compliment pulling fragrance where Ralph Lauren looks at the bottom line and they say to themselves, I would like some more money, please. Here, oh, thank you, uh, here's my money. And they kind of already had that with the Polo Blue line. That one, of course, uh, done in a, a very, mass appealing, super versatile way, you know, uh, an aquatic tinge to those fragrances, of course, fitting in with the blue coloration of the bottles. But Ralph's Club is also going after that same crowd, just in a different way. Lavender, Cleary, Sage, Vetiver, Cedar, some of the notes in the scent here. It has a little bit of a similarity to something like YSL Y Eau de Parfum. You know, it's done in a similar type of way. 
I really enjoy it. Great at pulling positive attention. A few of these are, but this one probably more so than anything in the list here today, other than maybe YEDT that could give it a run. So I always really liked it. I mean, the first time I sprayed it on the initial opening, I thought, ah, this is going to be pretty sucky. I'm not going to enjoy this. But then as it dried down, really grilled me fast the first time I smelled it. And I still do think that the opening for me is a little iffy, but as this stuff dries down, I can't fault it. So Ralph's Club, I like the way it smells. I know a lot of people out there are offended by that one. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. 10 fragrances that a lot of you out there hate that I really like. Let me know in the comments some of the fragrances that you like that generally seem to get crapped on. Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.